Printing on handmade, uncoated papers. I've been working on handmade and uncoated papers really since like 97, 98. It's been a long time. And I remember the reason I first got into it, I was still at that time very heavy darkroom printer. That was where most of my work was done. But I was interested in this new digital printing technology. Not so much for printing on, you know, matte papers and stuff like that that the inkjet companies were putting out, but more because I realized there was a wide world of paper out there that I as a photographic artist would really love to print on. And digital printing made that possible in a way that traditional darkroom printing didn't. So I got really excited about the potential for this. So back in like 97, 98, I remember going out and getting some Reeves BFK. I bought some other German and French papers and I started experimenting with printing on those materials. And the results at the time were actually quite good. And as the technology increased in the, the next decade, it became better and better and better to the point that by 2004, I'm printing nearly every single artwork I make only on handmade papers. And that's only continued since then. So I'm a total handmade paper junkie. Artworks that you're seeing behind me here, these four new artworks from New Orleans, these are all printed on a dye pigment-based printer by Hewlett Packard. Um, it's called a mate. The most beautiful papers. It's a difficult paper to print on, but it has this unbelievable sculptural quality, really amazing color. And remember, this is an uncoated paper. Is it possible to print great detail on uncoated paper? Yes, it is. Is it possible to get great color on an uncoated paper? Yes, it is. But what you have to do in order to get those type of results is start to educate yourself as to the strengths and weaknesses of uncoated paper. And what's the best way to do that? By printing test targets. Once again, test targets. So what I would recommend, go to your, you know, your local art store, go online and buy yourself a selection of different handmade papers. You know, from papers from Japan, Bhutan, South America, uh, Europe, Asia. Find yourself a handful of papers that you're really drawn to. And not just visually. Feel the paper. Really sort of get into the paper and decide what it is that you love. So then what I would do is go home and start to print test targets. And take a look at the targets and start to analyze them. Look at where it starts to block up in the shadows. If the paper isn't pure white, look at how the color balance of the paper is going to start to shift your print. Now, if you have the ability to make your own ICC profiles, it is possible to build beautiful ICC profiles for paper like Amate and Kinwashi and Gompies and all these other beautiful papers. But 99% of the time, I'm going to tell you right now, that is not necessary. So I'm going to give you a really big tip right now on how to start to make great prints on a handmade, uncoated paper. Most important thing is find an inkjet paper that has a similar white point. So if I'm printing on a paper like a mate, which is fairly warm, I could choose a paper profile by Awagami, say for their Kozo paper. Or I could choose a ICC profile by Hanamula, say for their bamboo. The white point of those papers is very similar, or it's close enough. And why that's important is that'll help a lot in the translation of how the color is gonna be printed on the paper. So that's step one. Find the papers you like, and then look at commercially made papers and find ICC profiles that have a similar white point in terms of the commercial paper compared to the handmade paper. Um, if you're working obviously on uncoated raw papers like this, don't start looking at, uh, at uh, photo type papers. You're looking more for matte surface ICC profiles. That's the number one first thing that you can do. The second thing is start to print out test targets once you've done that. And what you'll discover really quickly is the strengths and the weaknesses to the process. Um, you know, how does the black reproduce? How does the, the detail reproduce? What are the limits of color that I can get out of a straight profile? And then you'll learn to adapt and to modify your photographic practices in Photoshop for how you want a file to look, to look great on that particular paper. So what I'm gonna show you now is an example of a portrait that I did of my uh, amazing wife, Eve, a couple of days ago with my beautiful 1930 uh, Houghton Butcher uh, Duo Ensign camera. I love this camera, I love everything about this camera, and it has a really great portrait lens that I just absolutely love that can slide into place. Um, gives you unbelievably shallow depth of field, very sort of Juliet Margaret Cameron sort of quality, which I am personally a huge fan. 
Um, and I'm going to show it to you on two different papers and talk to you about the difference of those first two papers. So the first paper that you're looking at, this is on uh, Shirimi, which is a wider surface paper made in Japan. Really, really, really a beautiful stock. But personally, it's not my favorite paper. Because it's really white, it has a little bit more of a photographic quality to me. Now, if I was going for that look, this might be a great paper. But I'm looking more for something that looks more turn of the last century. And now I'm gonna show it to you on a warmer paper made in Bhutan that's a Mitsumata. Look at how gorgeous it is on the Mitsumata. Everything that I love about this image is just amplified in that paper. But you notice, I tell you this a lot here on Fitcher Revolution, all photography is about controlled loss. So for me and my visual aesthetics, I'm willing to lose a little bit of the image. I'm willing to lose a little bit of separation and tonality for what the paper brings to the table. If I wanted to keep everything, I'd be better to print on a really white paper, much like how the test target video that I, I did a few days ago talks about. You know, you've got a much longer black point to white point range. But in this particular piece, you know, it's a real lower gray tone sort of artwork. And I'm really going more for that feeling of that warmth and the texture and the paper and, and, and blurring the distinction where is it paper, is it image? And the image is coming out of the paper as opposed to being on the paper. So in this file right now, I wanted to showcase to you just how beautiful this print quality is. So what I did is I took a section of the actual print, put it on my Epson scanner, and did a really high resolution scan. So what you're seeing is actually from the print itself. It's difficult many times to try to photograph these prints with an iPhone and to be able to share the nuances of the print and of the texture and the detail um, in any meaningful sort of way. So I hope this showcases it a little bit better, but even this falls far short of just how beautiful this handmade paper, film, camera combination really is. So in upcoming videos, I'm gonna be talking more about dot placement, more about how to get you know great color without increasing contrast, discussions on thin papers versus thick papers. So stay tuned for additional videos here on Fissure Revolution. And again, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Happy shooting.